Hi, welcome back to Box of Lights. I'm Ricky Royal and this is the Grim Slingers playthrough. We just finished a turn here at an attack node and we get to move and we're going to head towards, I think, uh, Valley Haven. And to resolve that node, we move on to our storybook. This is good. This should be a landmark node. It might give me a chance to reload and maybe recover some health. So, um, I took a bit of a beating at the end of that last attack. Right, page 19. Valley Haven. A rundown outpost now maintained by some tolerable goblins and one minotaur gone salesman. A common stop for travellers seeking refuge and supplies. Action required. Players must take turns choosing any or all of the following options. Relax. Treat this node as if it were a rest node. Gain the appropriate amount of HP and EP and you also perform any rest node related activities. So if we treat this as a rest node, then we automatically gain two health, four to six, and two energy. But it says we can discard two items, excluding supplies, and return to full health and energy, or trade with Beardy the Minotaur. For every four items uh, you discard, you can select any one card of your choice from the item deck or discard pile. Any one item. We can go buy stuff. This guy's got a shop going on. Okay, what other rest node I, uh, actions can we date, take? We can use our reload or purge ability, but not both. So we're definitely going to reload. Uh, my animus should be flipped back at the end of the last battle. Uh, reload, put four discarded card spells back in your hands. Okay, I've got four in the discard pile, so they're all going back in my hand. You can reorganize your hand and stash. My hand limit is eight cards. I've currently got eight cards. Okay, but if I wanted to put Woolly Ward, this is an item, uh, back in my stash and take something else instead, I can do. I might actually just put my supplies here. The thing about your stash is the cards are, are, are protected. Remember at the, um, at the end of last turn, the scorpion got a, uh, a hold on us that meant we had to discard active cards, cards from our hands. Because I had stuff in my stash, it was kind of protected. I might actually save some of these for the final boss, but I might just use some supplies. Okay, let's grab this. This is usable during the standoff phase. In fact, I can use the standoff item now. Uh, why not? Let's do that. Let's use my supplies. This gets discarded. Plus one energy, plus one health. So that's up to seven and uh, seven and eight energies now at full. So I could now put something else back in my hand. Let's put the woolly ward in here, shall we? No. The man worm. I might need it. Okay. And well, now I can trade. For every four items you discard, select one of your choice. I could trade these four for one other, but I'm not going to. Um, I mean, we can have a little browse in the shop. There's nothing to stop us having a look in there. So there's things like treasure map. If you've got three of these, you can draw one item you wish. A hex fragment. Okay, there's three hex fragments, and they make the hexillion blade. This is a special item. It was set aside at the start of the game. Here it is. Uh, combined with an element spell, giving one numeric value to the spell's um, FX. Okay, pretty neat. The good thing about that one is obviously it's reusable. You just deactivate it on you, so you don't discard it. Some bandages, dual cults. Roll, do half that amount of damage. Right, so round it up. Some derelict darts. Play this with a wind, adds two damage. Mystics Tomahawk. One damage and discard two random active cards. That's pretty neat. It kind of beats down your enemies so that they, they don't have any uh, skill cards. Bullwhip, Flask of Whiskey, minus one damage. An Arcane Hand Cannon. Target takes one damage and you can combine this with an element. 
which is good because this has got a resolution number of 10. Okay, these are the types of things that you can find as it goes. I'm kind of happy with what I've got. All right, so that's Valley Haven resolved. Now I think we can move on and I think we'll move to this event node. We still haven't met the prerequisites for part two. It says must have resolved at least two nodes, attack or event, since starting chapter two. We've only resolved one attack node so far, but now we're going to resolve an event node. And all we do here is draw a card from the event deck. And let's see what we get. Death from above. The sky darkens, and as you look above, you spot a very large creature flying overhead. It calls and begins cycling you. Turns out it was a bad idea to eat those eggs. Okay, players take turns choosing an action. Uh, we've got two options here. We can discard enough spells that if played with total five damage, and then the creature leaves us alone, or we can draw numeric cards until left alone. And uh, here we're going to kind of take our chances a little bit, and we may get damaged. Let's, t let's push our luck and do the DNC option. I'm not that bothered because I've got a rest node potentially coming up. So let's see if we can get lucky. Okay, ready. Okay, draw a numeric card. It's a one. It swoops down, grabbing you and throwing you several feet. Take two damage. Ah, seven down to five. We don't want to get killed doing this, do we? A three. It's dropping bombs. Pay one energy point to dodge them or get hit and lose one HP and what's left of your dignity. Okay, let's pay an energy. We're looking for a five. There we go. Excellent. Five. You find a place to hide. The creature leaves you alone. Excellent. Okay. I'll get shuffled back up. Uh, two health damage, one energy lost. This gets discarded, but that does finish our resolution and we get to move on. So let's go to the Hank the Hunter node. And as we move into the narrative phase of the next turn, we have now met the prerequisites of part two. We've resolved one attack on one event node. I don't really want to spoil the story for you, but we're gonna have a narrative here. Before we start part three, make sure you're ready for a challenging fight. And the prerequisite to part three, uh, you must have all six ritual items. These are the ritual items. We've already got one, actually. The Poyoti Poison. So let's see, what are the other six? Worm feces, nice. Jantler. Human heart, ectoplasm, and carbra guts. Ugh, nasty. Okay, so those are the six that we've got to trade for somehow. Obviously, some of them we know we've been able to get by killing some of those beasts. So we've got quite a bit of work to do. We're going to have to collect items like crazy. Now, I'm not going to give it away, but there are some places where you can find lots of items. Okay. But remember one other thing we were told at the start of chapter two. And the next time the players visit Hank the Hunter, they may hire him for free. Okay, so we do our node resolution. It's, we're at Hank the Hunter. And it says, a lone tree stands erect in the desert. Atop it sits a worn down shack. Surrounding the tree's perimeter are wooden palisades and briar filled trenches. You can see several skulls and rib cages from all kinds of creatures stuck on the, on the spikes. The shack has a balcony on which is sitting Hank, whittling away at another spike while simultaneously pointing a rifle, pistol and cannon at you. Players may now choose one option as a group. We can hire Hank or we can avoid him or we can hire him. And remember we were told we could hire him for free. Normally you would trade some items, discard five items. Here he is, like the Hexillion Blade. It's a card that's put aside at the beginning of the game. Here he is. Hank the Hunter. Looks like some 
reptilian or amphibian four-armed <laughs> um, bounty hunter type character. Let's see what he says. He ain't much for the front lines, but he sure as hell's got your back. This card may be moved to your character space during a duel. You must discard this card as soon as the duel in which you used it is over. And we use the following skills during the duel, but must activate the card each time. Snipe them while they're hot. Effect two damage to the target. Standoff single target. Okay, so that's a, a standoff effect. Just pick him off, do two damage. Patch it up effect. Plus two HP to yourself or one teammate of your choosing. All right, so you can help yourself heal up. So he's a pretty useful ally to have. He's going in my stash, along with my other items. Your stash is kind of... Uh, bottomless, you can carry loads of stuff here. Okay, And I think we're ready to move on. We've got quite a lot of work to do to find all six of those items. Uh, we know that Valley Haven we can trade with the Minotaur from, for any item we wish from that deck. So that's certainly going to be a route in there, but we need lots of cards to trade. But for now, that's going to conclude my demonstration of Grim Slingers. I hope you've enjoyed watching the gameplay. We've played through a complete uh, part of one chapter, but that really was just a taster for the rest of the adventure that's about to unfold. There's four chapters in all, lots of gameplay in the campaign. Go and check it out. Really enjoy this one. It's got a, a unique feel to it. I've not played any games that that feel like this and I'm really looking forward to expansions, adding more depth, more characters, more enemies and many more grim slinging adventures. See you next time.